Let's continue a build up to the election here in Nigeria as we cross over to a London studio where the Lagos State APC Deputy Governorship candidate, Dr. Obafemi Hamza, joins me now. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, curious I'm speaking to you all the way from London when you should be here, hard at work, campaigning and all of that. Yes, well, I mean, we came to London to speak to our brothers and sisters in diaspora and to appreciate them for their concern. They are really worried about the state of Nigeria and, of course, Lagos. And the essence is to come and pitch what our programs are, what are the ideas, and to also listen to them. They have ideas so that we can also learn from them as to how to build the Lagos that we all dream of. Interesting. All right, now, let's look at um, your reaction to the president's budget and um, uh, the reaction of the lawmakers in the House as well. Tell us, is a budget of 8.83 trillion naira proposed for 2019, and 2.14 trillion naira will be used for debt servicing, while capital expenditure uh, is at 2.03 trillion naira. That's the amount the president proposes to spend. What are your thoughts on the budget? Well, I think given the history uh, of our country, I think it's uh, it's a reasonable budget in my view. Uh, we have to service our debts. Um, as we borrow to develop, because as you know, our money is fungible. So at the time that you get that money, you might not be able to do things that you, are, you wanted to do if you wait after. So you know, borrowing is, must be part of our budgeting. And therefore, provision for debt servicing, I think, is key so that we meet our obligations. And I think it's also important to understand, like you said, the quantum of money that is actually our fund that is allocated to capital budgets. And I think that's the only way we can move our country forward. Uh, before now, you know that capital expenditure in our budget usually falls below 15%. But this government has moved it on. The last time, I think it was 26 or so percent. And the hope is that it will keep increasing because as we build and maintain our infrastructure, that's when we can make life easier for Nigeria. So I think on the whole, is a balanced budget in my view. Sorry. capital expenditure how much impact would you say that has made and also let's take a look at that a look at the implementation of the 2018 budget um, there were complaints that even some government agencies had only eight percent of their 2018 budget released to them so that brings us to the point as i said earlier of implementation of the 2018 budget and what an increase in capital expenditure has done or is it still a drop in a mighty ocean well, I think the, the issue is this. We must look at this holistically, though. I mean, when do we get the budget released? That's the challenge. So the budget is sent to the National Assembly now. This is December, right? But last year, we got the budget out around May. So the reality is, in May, if, for example, let's look at Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. By May, June, you, you start your rain. This rain will start. So you are delayed because the cost of road construction and projects will be slow. So I think the National Assembly also, I now understand that they have their regimen, they want to do a lot of things, but I think we should shorten this period. Yes. Shorten it so we that should, the budget can come the, out two, three months after submission the budget, so that we can start the implementation because you must look at it. Shouldn't a the lot of things actually bill. also needs timing. Yes, but if the appropriation bill is submitted way earlier than December, wouldn't that help the, the budget to be passed earlier? Well, but look at last year. When was it submitted? It was submitted, I think, in October, but we got it in May. Okay, so this is December now. I understand, but I'm just saying that everybody should work together to make sure that we all serve our people the right way. So the National Assembly also has a role here. So whatever they are doing, so they the can, the in, in other jurisdictions, in other climes, yes, they all have a role to play, but the executive have done, they've dropped the budget, but in other jurisdictions, people call off recess. People call off recess. In the United States, they call, they, they, they call off recess to come and debate issues. So we should call off recess too, if, they, if that is what is necessary. That's their job, that's their responsibility. I know all of us, we want Nigeria to grow. So those are the sacrifices that everybody must make. So that at least we can get the budget out far, far earlier so that people can actually do what is right for them. 
we can do what is right for our country. Mm. Let's look at the explosion that recently happened. Now, unfortunately, Nigerians have seen a lot of, even Lagosians have seen a lot of pipeline explosions um, caused by vandals who want to reap off, you know, the profits of, you know, getting products where they didn't reap. Now, this is an issue that has caused the loss of lives of many. And yet again, uh, Lagos witnessed it, Nigeria and Lagos witnessed this. Now, do you think this is a failure on the part of the federal and the state government? Well, I think, well, I'm not even sure I would look at it that way. The, the, the reality is, as a people, we must learn to exercise our rights without destructing our own infrastructure. The reality is, if people go and bust pipes, our money will be used to, to rebuild it. So that money could have been spent in the hospital or to build road or something. But, and we cause problems for ourselves. So for example, because of pipeline busting and breaking and damages, everybody now clogs in Apapa instead of going to Mosimi or instead of going to Shagamu. To, so it has a ripple effect. But the reality, though, is the rule of law. So, we must make sure that we exercise our, our laws so that anybody that tries to destroy the assets of the country can be properly taken care of because it's our assets and we cannot, because of anger or because of protest, destroy what belongs to all of us. We must exercise our rights, our grievances in a different way. Uh, what about adapting modern... Well, because of whatever reason. So, yes, so what about adapting modern security measures um, to deal with these problems that we are facing when it comes to pipeline Bursting. Let's talk about protecting our pipelines here in Nigeria and even in Lagos State. But we don't seem to understand the best way to do it. So we need technology-driven solutions to these problems, don't you think? Well, I think, look, the reality is that if we protect, so we have a ton of people protecting it, we are spending money that is truly unnecessary, you know. But we should engage our citizens to understand what it means when you break these things. The danger, first of all, to the community, there can be explosion and people's life will be at risk. Or even to the people collecting it. It's a collective asset and therefore we should all protect it. It's our taxpayers' money that is being spent. So, because if you spend tons of money to have people to literalize it, it then that money should have been spent to do something more productive for the citizens of Nigeria. So I think we need to engage ourselves and understand that our asset is our asset. And we must protect it all over the world. All over the world, that's what happens. People protect the asset because it's people's asset. It's yes. not the president's asset. It's not the vice president's asset. It's not the governor's asset. But it's the people's asset. Yes. These people will come but and go. Knowing that but those assets are there to serve Nigerians. But knowing that keeping these assets are safe is a challenge, and knowing that sending men to actually monitor these assets is too cost intensive, there should be new measures being thought of to protect these assets, don't you think? Well, absolutely. I mean, for example, now if you, if you look at all the, the power lines and the grids that is being built now, they all have LIDAR. So what that means is they are able to monitor it remotely. And if anything happens, so, but this, some of these assets are old. So at that time, apparently they didn't have those technology, but the new ones that have been laid, we have LIDAR uh, exposure so that you can monitor it remotely and see what is happening. And if there's any emergency, people can be deployed to do it. But for the old asset, it has to be probably manual. And those are the challenges because there are old pipes that have been built years, years back. And as such, we just need to make sure that we convince ourselves as a people that we should not destroy our own assets. All right, now, let's talk about um, what people are saying about the APC. Now, the APC wants to come back a second term into Nigeria as the ruling party presently. But there's been a lot of dissatisfaction about the way affairs in the country have been run. They say um, the APC did not deliver on its many promises, from the security issues to that of the economy, to fighting corruption, and many other issues. It would seem that a lot of critics are unsatisfied with the way uh, Nigeria has been going. And recently, the president even admitted to it. Now, you think that uh, with all of this, Nigerians should vote the APC back in for a second term? Oh, uh, so, absolutely. And I think the issue is this. You have, so let's look at the alternative. The alternative is the party that has been in government for 16 years and literally destroyed our economy. There are several other alternatives. When we have enormous amount of resources, 
Yes. The, so the, the alternative is not good. And, you know, look, it's always easy to destroy things. Rebuilding is always a challenge. We all know that, even from fundamental arithmetic. So the reality is, let us look at various sectors. So in agriculture, how, how, how much rice are we importing as a nation before 2015? It has gone down by about 65%. How much egg are we importing as a nation? And so on and so forth. So there is increase. We are diversifying our economy now. We are not, but in order to build it, sometimes th things get worse in order to get better for the people because of the diversification. So you are taking money away from an area to another area. Of course, the people in the area where you are taking money from will feel slighted, but it's for the common good. And sometimes when you are doing things for the common good, some individuals, some personalities might be offended. But you have to look at the greater, for, for the greater good for the greater number of people. Right. And that's the challenge. So look at the rice production in, all, in various states of the Federation now. If you go to Niger State, the enormous amount of farmers, young men engage in farming. The same thing in Kebi State and the rest. So as we continue to grow it, we are building Enormous what amount about of entrepreneurs. Security? And I think we should follow that part. What about not security? the container economy what that PDP does. What about the security of uh, the people, especially in the northeastern parts of Nigeria? What about um, fighting corruption? A lot of people have said this government has paid lip service to fighting corruption. What about these? Well, you know, for example, thank you very much. You asked about the northeast. Before Buhari came in, okay. Boko Haram occupied 14 local governments. And if you understand this local government, remember, a local government in some part of the north is bigger than some states. So as an example, Niger state is twice bigger than the whole of southeast. So imagine if Boko Haram takes over, God forbid, Niger state, for example. So they took over a lot of local government in Bornu state. They took over a lot of local government in Yobe. What about what's some going part on right in, now? in Gombe. And the rest, but today, that is not... But no, no, but that's not the situation now. What we going have on right now. is it a lot of us security forces have been victims of this. They, there's been massive loss of lives amongst our security operatives because mm -hmm. of the bombings that is, they're seeing an upsurge in bombings presently, despite the fact that this government says it has everything under control. I'm not saying all the problems have been resolved. That's not the case. All the problems have not been resolved. The issue is are we better off? Yes. Before, I'm saying that they have locations in this land. Out of the 774 local government that this country has, we were, they were occupying 14 local government. They were the landlord. They own the town. That is not the case now. It's a terrorist organization. And you know, when people decide to kill themselves in order to inflict harm on fellow citizens, it's a challenge. So what we just need to do is a different approach to fighting this war. But in terms of physical location, they've been decimated. But the challenge is they've not been totally eradicated. So a new approach will have to be devised by the security operator. But are we making progress? I think yes, better than before. Okay. Now, before, the government of Yobe State cannot occupy government secretariat. Today, they are there. They are able to serve their people. People are now going to the farm in the Northeast. Two, three years, four years ago, they were not able to do it. In fact, there was no farming. In, uh, in the Northeast for about three years. So that is not the situation today. So the lives of people have improved. But have we solved all the security challenges? The answer is no. But is it better? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so we should then give uh, uh, the, the, the access to the government that is doing that improvement okay. rather than going back to a government, government that was about, totally nonchalant towards let's the security about, of our people. Let's talk about the Lagos State government now. Um, Lagos State, we know, is a commercially vibrant city, and the most commercial vibrant city of Nigeria. And we know that Lagos has so much. Um, so whoever steers the helms of affairs in Lagos has to be one who understands how to navigate the waters of, uh, you know, the richness on diversity in Lagos. Now tell us, what are your plans for Lagos State? Lagosians are groaning under high um, taxes already. Um, and they say it's not commensurate to the facilities that they see in the state. What are your plans for Lagos State? Well, the plan for Lagos State is to make Lagos an easier place to do business. Um, well, you remember, though, that there, are, there is only one tax, really, when you look at it, or charge that Lagos State does. So majority of company taxes go to the federal government. All we collect is payee, which is actually by law. 
and not necessarily a state law. It's a federal law that is applicable to all the states for people that are resident in all the states in the country. So I'm sure you are talking to, about the land use charge. Now, yes. land use charge, that's what I'm, well, yeah. I just mentioned it. Yeah. You are, I'm sure you are talking about land use charge. Now, it, the question was, I'm not in government now, so I'm not sure why the rate is, it, it, it's a rate of a property, right? So is the valuation that's probably a challenge? But let us assume that the valuation is correct. It's a percentage. What the government did now is to raise it to 0 0.793 or thereabout. It used to be 0 0.375. What I can promise you is we will bring it back to that rate and increase our collection so that let everybody pay, not to kill the people that are, that are paying. So it's, 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 it's a challenge, but it's something that we, 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 we will do and improve on our collection rate. But like I said, it was increased to 0 0.75. It's less than 0. Point, it's less than 1%, but it used to be 0 0.395, 0 0.4, let's say, it was increased to 0 0.7 or 0 0.8. So we will bring it back to 0.4% so okay. that people can have relief and therefore we will increase on the collection in various areas. Look, remember, the government has responsibility to actually build infrastructure to make life easy, security of life. And that is how these funds are collected. Go, Lagos State government or any state government don't print currency. We don't print money. Mm. So it's the resources from residents of the state that we use. But it must be balanced. And that's what we intend to do. We balance it so that we can deliver on a lot of things that we plan for Lagos. All right. Healthcare, better healthcare, <laughs> resolving over 51 gridlock in terms of transportation, building multimodal transportation for we'll hold Lagos you to State. Your word. You, as you, no, this thing costs resources. And therefore, yeah. that's one of the ways we we'll we'll get that. We'll hold you to Thank your you. promises. Um, before we wrap this up, uh, one more question for you. Now, there's a belief that you have about the same clouds with the man who's running for governor, um, Song Wolu. And so the question is, when, if you do clinch the position, can you guys work amicably? Do we see you guys working hand in hand and having no issues at the end of the day? Well. Uh, we made conscious decisions in life, okay? So it, 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 these decisions were not forced on me as a, as a running mate. I'm very close to Mr. Abadie Sonwolu. He's been my friend for over 15 years. I know him. I know his family. I understand his philosophy about life, and I understand his passion about Lagos State. And that's why during the primary, I stepped down for him. So it was a conscious decision for me to make. All right, you know, thank you so and much. I know that people challenge these, people ask these questions. But the reality is, we have a enormous amount of work to do in Lagos. Right. And we'll be able to share it. We have commissioners. Right. We have special advisors. So the governor or the deputy governor cannot do it alone. Thank All the you. team members will do this alone. All right. And we work among Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Hamza. You. Thank you for your time. Hopefully, you'll drop by the studio in person as Dr. Hamza, who's running for deputy governor in Lagos State, running mate to um, Songwulu and um, on the platform on the, of the APC.